100%. Hey, Kedron. Hey. Uh, there you are. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. Yeah. Are you having tech? Are you having technical difficulties today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Yeah. So hi, everyone. This is Kidron. Uh, and Kidron, we are, um, we're talking to the newspaper from Gull Lake High School in Michigan. And it's near um, Kalamazoo. And um, anyway, so they wanted to interview you and talk to you. And I'll just let you take it from here and talk a little bit about yourself. I sort of introduced you and talked mm -hmm. a little bit about your background like we've done. And uh, yeah, so so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm Kedron Bryant. Um, I'm 14. Uh, I'm a recording artist. I'm signed to one of the records. Um, and I went viral for my video I sung um, called I Just Want to Live in 2020. And um, I landed a record deal and I've been singing for um, since I was like five years old. And I really started catching on to it um, around seven. Um, I started making videos for like social media, started posting them um, and started really working hard on it. Um, but in, I went viral in 2020 and that's what really started my music journey um, from now on. So, um, yeah. And um, and could you sing something for us, Kidron? Yes. Okay. I, so I'm going to sing um, this song it's, it's a song that I went viral from um, in 2020. It was about um, George Floyd, um, his passing and um, police brutality, basically, um, you know, just equality. So this, I, I just want to live. I'm a young black man doing all that I can to stay and over and look around. And I see what's being done to my kind every day. I'm being hunted as prey. My people don't want no trouble. We've had enough trouble. I just want to live. God protect me. I just want to live. I just want to leave. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Do y'all have any questions for him right now around that or? Thank you, John. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. So we wanted to know, uh, like, where are you? Would you mind telling us about like your background, like where you're from, you know, where you grew up, like what your childhood was like, stuff like that? Yeah. Uh, so um, I, well, I'm, I'm, I grew up, um, well, I was born in Italy and then I moved to Japan, to Florida. Um, it's because my dad is in the military, um, and so he was stationed at different places. And so um, I grew up. I I started singing in church. Um, my dad and my mom they're ministers, so I started you know singing there and um, really got my passion for it. And my mom and my dad they really influenced me to like sing more um, because my my whole family sings. Um, so I basically come from like a musical family, so I always been around it. And um, yeah, so basically that's mainly um, also my sister and we also do songs together. Um, we actually have a Christmas song um, that we did together and she um, she mainly does like um, some of my backgrounds for my songs too. Um, so yeah, my family's definitely really involved in like my music career, so yeah. That's awesome, thank you. Um, what do you uh inspires like your songs or your writing um inspired i think it's mainly like um basically like what's going on in the world um or 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 what i um may think you know um from my opponent's point of view like how i view the world um 
because like my my last EP is like about kind of like R and B. It's like you know love, like like really getting into like how it's supposed to be, um, like relationships and stuff. Um, the songs on there and um, mainly just trying to like you know give an example of how you know a young relationship can you know be natural and you know you basically just vibing with each, each other and yeah just teaching how like love really is and so yeah that's really how I get my inspiration um do you like to sing like any other genres besides R&B or is it like just mainly like the passion is in R&B um I do um I I sing gospel music um mainly but mainly yes like my my real passion is like r&b but i do sing gospel music and just because I, I grew up in church and then so that i just caught on to that yeah. um you're only 14 and you've achieved so much is really impressive um where do you see yourself in 10 years from now i see um well first i want to move um to um los angeles um, um, cause that's where like my team is and that's where mainly like the music industry is. Um, and I want to move out there, you know, to keep growing in my gift. Um, also I want to win, um, probably like two Grammys by then, um, for one of my songs and I want to get into like acting movies, um, have like a role in a major movie, um, with legends and stuff like that. And um, yeah, basically like, um, but I think probably 20 years from now, I want to be an EGOT, so yeah. Great, thank you. Um, outside of music, like what are your other hobbies or passions? Um, outside of music, I do, um, I run track for my school. Um, I love running track um, and I, um, I play my game sometimes. Um, I play like GTA or Fortnite or something when I'm like on my off time or something. And I also like, I like to like go on my golf cart and like ride around the neighborhood and stuff. And basically like go like watch TikTok and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh... Hi, Kijan. Uh, what what has been something that you've been told in your career, especially in like 2020, in your big height, your big like boom, that really inspired you, really made you realize, wow, like I'm huge now. So it was it was mainly um, the one that really sparked me. Um, like for me to really realize that like wow this is like happening was when I um, was when well this is when I, I already flew out to LA to record my um, EP and um, my producer he works with um, Dr. Dre and then um, it was like around my birthday um, it was like yeah it was my birth. My birthday is July third, right before Independence Day, and so that's when um Dr. Dre called and he wanted me like to come to his house like for like the Fourth of July, um because he was having like a celebration, and so I got to go to his house and um mainly just like hang out and stuff, and then I sung um I, I sung for him um. So that was a really cool experience. And then he also gave me some really cool advice, like, um, you know, to always be myself, um, you know, because people will try to like deter you, make you somebody that you're not. And so he really encouraged me, you know, to always stay true to myself and keep going. All right, thank you. Speaking of Dr. Dre, do you have any other uh, artists that like inspire you and that you like try to, maybe base your own music around? Um, I do. Um, definitely, um, it's an artist, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's um, a couple artists. Um, John Legend, he inspires me because I'm um, also learning how to play 
um, the keys right now. And I want to add that to my, um, you know, treasure box. And um, Giveon inspires me because um, he's also um, kind of like an R&B pop singer. And so, um, yeah, that's mainly like who really, um, you know, keeps me like, okay, yeah, I want to kind of go in that field that they're in. So. Yeah. I'm glad you said John Legend. I was thinking when I uh, was listening to your music, I was really hearing the, like, yeah. <laughs> like I was getting the John Legend vibe. So. <laughs> Okay, John, would you like to do another song for us, please? Yes. So um, I'm going to do Everything. It's um, a song off my newest EP that I released um, February. And um, it's called Everything. Yeah, it's called Everything. It's about like R&B. Um, well, it, it's an R&B song, and it's about young love and relationships. So. It's your loyalty that makes you all your tea. Not just what you told me, but the many ways you show me I love you. I do, I do, I do. I gotta have you. It's true, it's true, it's true. You say you want a man. You say you need a friend. Girl, I can be both. And the smile on your face is what I enjoy the most. Yeah, yeah. It's my pleasure. You're my treasure. I'm gonna give you the best of the best of me, all or nothing. You deserve everything. Since you're my everything, I'll give you everything, girl. You're everything to me. I ain't sleeping on you, though you are my dream, girl. You are my fantasy. Can I take you by the hand? Just with me, make a plan, girl. Make you feel real special. Show you a real good time. I just wanna make you mine, oh mine, oh mine, oh mine. Thank you. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about um, how everything came about, how the process of recording and writing that evolved? Yeah. So um, it was um, mainly because I, I um, blew up in 2020 around like um, so, 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 social justice. Um, and so that's when I really um, kind of went to that lane and then I moved out of, of that lane to make sure that like the whole world um has something to hear um you know just to get them in a, a new vibe and stuff like that and so um that's where I, I moved to um R&B and that song um mainly um like I said like bringing like young love like R&B um in relationships like that and also you know teaching them like how to like express your feelings like you're my everything and stuff like that so yeah okay thanks and uh do you have another song you'd like to do for us and tell us a little bit about um um i don't have another song um Hmm. There was um what about passing through? Was that something you, you could um oh well I, I have a song now. Um Okay. <laughs> it's 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 um by John Legend. Um it's, it's called um Ordinary People mm. and um yeah so Girl, I'm in love with you. This ain't the honeymoon. We passed the infatuation phase. Yeah, right in the thick of love. At times we get sick of love. It seems like we argue every day. I know I misbehaved and you made your mistakes and we both still got room left to grow. 
And though love sometimes hurts, I still put you first and we'll make this thing work. But I think we should take it slow. We're just ordinary people. Mm. We don't know which way to go. Cause we're ordinary people. Maybe we should take it slow, take it slow. This time we'll take it slow, take it slow. Oh, 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 oh. this time we'll take it slow. Thank you. Thank you. And what is it about that song that speaks to you? Um, mainly, I just really like, um, you know, like what he's saying, and um, also basically like like the vibe of the song. Because mm. um, I, I I love R and B music, um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you all have any any questions? Um, I just have one last question. Um, what does like the process of you writing a song look like? Like, do you, you talked about like the inspiration behind it, but then do you like start with like the rhythm first or do you go straight to lyrics? So, so as right now, I haven't um, really started like writing um, like music that, that's been released. Um, I'm actually working on it, but um mainly my, my producer and also my mom um, <clears throat> and, and the team on um, one of they also help out with writers. And um, I do see that they, they, they normally start off with like what their message is, um, what they want to get out. Um, but I think they do start with words first and then get the rhythm next, so. Perfect. Thank you. All right. I have a question. Uh, is, has there been any like stress or struggles being being so like popular with and being so young at the same time? Um. Yeah. It's definitely. Um. It sometimes get really, really stressful. Some at times where um, you know, dealing with school and then doing um like traveling going to different um events doing um you know stuff for my music career um but i do just try to stay focused um um and not get distracted um on one thing cuz um it's easy um to get distracted and when you went well for me um when i get distracted um it takes a while like to get back on track um, and, you know, get focused. So I just try not to um, get distracted. Um, so, yeah. All right, thank you. Um, you. You mentioned earlier about your transition from sort of social justice to more of love in your themes and your songs. It's been hard to transition from two different topics like that. Yeah, so it was definitely a, um, a, a long, hard process, um, like to battle, um, because I had fans that were like sick with me um, for the social justice and then um, trying to like easily go to that field um, smoothly. But um, it definitely got just a, a, a little rocky sometimes, but I, um, you know, I kind of pushed through and made it there. So yeah, it was definitely hard at times though. So. What was difficult about it, Kijon? Um, just trying to like make sure that my fans um like the music um because mm -hmm. you know everybody has different um opinions and stuff um and not saying that like the opinions um I'm battling my the opinions on like how I sound or my music um just trying to like discover different things um but it was definitely hard like to see where my fan's head was and so um and I, I think it wasn't like a bad bad mm -hmm. process um when I finally got there so yeah 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 and um and could you talk a little bit about how the impact of um 
I just want to live impacted you? Um, I, I, the impact. Okay, so can you repeat the question one more time? Um, could you speak a little bit about how the impact of I just want to live and its reception impacted you? And um, yeah, so I think definitely it impacted me um, because of what it had on um, like celebrities. Um, they, were they, they were reposting it um, like Le LeBron James and Snoop Dogg and stuff and also from former president Barack Obama, um, he reposted it as well. Um, it was definitely um, amazing to see that um, that just that song um, and that video that went viral just impacted, um, you know, legends um, in the world that I wouldn't even imagine would even know that I'm that I exist or that I'm here. Mm -hmm. So um, it was definitely a very a very very like impactful thing and really encouraged me like to go on my music um and keep pushing so that that really um pushed me further in my career so it was encouraging <laughs> was it a difficult song to do because of the uh the subject matter um i wouldn't say that it was like difficult but it definitely um took a lot of um meditating and guts to do it um because it was such a tragic time um because it was also like the um start of COVID-19 mm -hmm. and um that was a hard time for um the U.S. so it was it was a lot of things going on so um from it, it definitely took a lot of like prayer and meditation you know to put that out so yeah thank you um, I have I've one more question. You mentioned that, um, like the recognition that you got from those celebrities and famous people, was there any one in particular that really stood out to you? Um, definitely. Well, it was definitely Do Dr. Dre, um, because, um, he definitely like took me in, um, and like, like as a mentor and, um, you know, just mainly just trying to make sure that I succeed, um and that I have fun you're doing it um and try not trying to get too stressful so um yeah it definitely Dr. J he definitely stuck out um because I did get a lot of like um messages from a lot of celebrities and um like Jay-Z and Beyonce well they actually like called but um Dr. Dre really stuck out to me um because he definitely I actually got, well, I actually recently went to his house, um, like January, yeah, no, no, February, February, I think, around that time, um, so yeah. Great, thank you. And, uh, and what about interacting, or what about being around Dre um, impacted you the most? Um, because I just, think he's a brilliant producer and artist in his own right. So yeah, that's quite a, uh, you know, compliment to be acknowledged by someone like that, in my opinion. Yeah, so, um, but can you do the question one more time? What, what is it about um, interacting with Dre or what was your biggest takeaway from that in terms of what he had to offer you? What? Um, so yeah, it was definitely um, my, my biggest takeaway um, was was like you know just just being able to be like comfortable um he's he's not like that kind of like celebrity where um very like picky or something like how how you would think they are like on the movies or something like that but he's definitely like down to earth and humble um and it's like it's it's like big as he is in the music industry he like like you would think he would be like that, but he's he's definitely not, and he encourages um other people, mm -hmm. um, and so he treats everybody the same, so it's not um you know different. So it's def he's definitely a big impact on me, and yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. So do you all have any other questions for Keydron? I do have one thing I was trying to say to Keydron. 
Uh, I just wanted to say, Kijan, you are an inspiration and coming from another black man, it's just, I love to see when another young black man is just uh, able to succeed and have something that means so much to the community. So yes, you're doing great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so Kijan, what are, what are uh, future musical plans for you? What's next? Um, I do have a lot of um, upcoming projects. Um, I'm releasing some new, some new music. Um, also, I'm also like doing a different shows in the summertime cool. and also, um, yeah, traveling, you know, mm -hmm. doing more interviews and stuff. So yeah, a lot of things coming. great. And do you have any questions for them? Um, I do. So like, can like, can like someone explain like what this class is or is this like a class or is this just like a group or? Well, uh, this, this is like a, the go like newspaper class. So mm -hmm. uh, we just like, we yeah, write articles and journal about, you know, certain topics, like sometimes it's in the news, uh, in the community, uh, interviews with people like this, and uh, mm -hmm. just, you know, stories that we feel should be covered here at Gull Lake and we're just yeah. the group that writes them. Yeah, they're the school newspaper. So they, yeah, they write about what's going on around school and around their community and the world and, and, and you know, and cover artists like yourself and then put out a newspaper <laughs> around all that. So they're writers, they are writers as well. <laughs> they write, yeah. <laughs> Do you all have anything else for Kijan? Uh, thank you so much for your time. It was good to hear from you and you. we're honored to have met you. So thank you so much. Thank oh, and Kijan, I will let you know also, Cheryl, do you want to tell them about um, the recording and it going up online and all that as well? Yes, they'll probably, they will be editing parts of the recording and putting it up on our school newspaper's website. Okay. Yeah. Well, Kidron, thank you so much. It was fun. And thank you guys for making time for us this morning. Well, yeah. thank, well thank you. you. Did you have a question? Who, me? Oh, I, I was just yeah. asking. Oh, okay. We're recording up, up there with you, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, we, did, we didn't hear that. We didn't hear you? Oh. Oh, yeah. I was just asking if, if it was okay if yeah yeah it's fine mm. yeah he said, he said yeah he said, okay yeah okay great yeah. all right well thank you you guys and Kidron, i'll see you in a couple hours again <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys thank you so much thank you thank you. you too bye-bye bye thank you Teresa. thanks cheryl All right. Uh, so, Teresa, like, how does she know Kidron? Is she like a teacher? Or? No, she she is the, one of the PR top people at Moxie, oh. and they um for years I've belonged to Moxie. They actually you know put out new entertainers and some established ones as well. Um, or you were telling us about some other famous ones. Now. Yeah, who are some of the other? Um, Esteban, um, I, I, I saw and, 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 um, gosh, there's just so many of them that, um, let me, I'll, I'll go through and I'll, I can tell you. Are you putting your dog in that picture? Yes. Oh, it looked like a bunny. Cup. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's pickles. Her name is yeah, she just passed away this year. Um, 